thank you, the organizers, for inviting me here. I will uh, talk about um, the uh, International Carbohydrate Quality Consortium update. And uh, these are my disclosures. The ICQC is a group uh, made of uh, 27 members out of uh, 11 countries, three continents. Members um, are, and chairs are, are, are uh, academic scientists. And the list, uh, you can see it also on the website. We now have a website. It's a work in progress, though. But uh, it is there. And uh, why did we start the ICQC group? Because we're all confused about carbohydrates. Obviously, you've, you've seen some of that here. But outside, uh, the public is even more confused. And we have uh, people eating less carbohydrates. Uh, even in uh, Mediterranean countries like Italy, where there is a high consumption of carbohydrates, well, now it has... Uh, being reduced. These are actually da this is, these are data from uh, 1960s uh, uh, in the middle and 20, uh, 2008 to 2012. Uh, these are average intakes. And on the side, you see it in Italian, but basically the top uh, uh, says uh, cereals. So cereals uh, uh, have redu are reduced from the 1960s, about half. Uh, vegetables as well, verdure is vegetables. And uh, what has increased a lot is the bottom part. You can see all the red uh, uh, arrows, meat uh, and uh, cheeses. Uh, anyways, dairy products even fourfold, uh, and including sweets. Uh, Dolce, uh, the bottom from 19 grams to 84. So we, um, there is a need uh, to improve, even in Mediterranean countries, uh, uh, the aspects of carbohydrates and help people understand what is uh, a good quality carbohydrate to consume. Um, so this is our mission, the ICQC mission. You'll find all this also on the website. is to support, summarize, and disseminate the science around dietary carbohydrate and health. Uh, with a focus on quality and to encourage dialogue between academia, industry, and the governmental bodies. We meet every two years. We started in 2013, so we will uh, meet again next uh, year. Um, this is more or less uh, in percentages what we would like to, uh, what are our goals in terms of activities. So let's say on 33% nutritional sciences, but um, another third um, work with uh, health uh, institutions and governmental bodies, and an, another third uh, with the food industry. Because if we don't improve uh, the food that, uh, the, the, or the carbohydrate food in this case, that the food industry is proposing, then we cannot uh, change uh, um, at the bottom the nutritional quality of consumers' uh, uh, food choices, and that's very, Important. So we need to also um, work from uh, from the point of view of uh, food labels and uh, claims as well. We published uh, several uh, papers, seven since 2013 till now, and um, we th these are published papers. But I'll just uh, show you um, the main one of the first ones, uh, which was on uh, a consensus statement on glycemic index load and glycemic response. And uh, another consensus statement was um, uh, written on whole grains last year, but this is not yet published uh, on a scientific paper, but we have it on our website. And it includes 10 points. Uh, I don't think I have time to go through them, but I think you'll receive this uh, anyways in, uh, uh, in an email, uh, all the presentations. And um, yeah, there are 10 of them, like the 10 commandments, but they are a bit easier to follow, I think. <laughs> um, other activities that we did since 2013, our um, responses to calls, like um, calls from uh, Health Canada on postprandial glycemia, UK Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition, and, and uh, Diabetes UK on carbohydrate nutrition. Also, we, are, uh, submit, we have just submitted two papers, and which we've heard the Geoff talking about uh, yesterday um, on dietary GNGL and uh, type 2 diabetes. Future activities, um, these are some, of course, not, not all, but we, we will try to, um, for the future, to promote, uh, of course, healthy carbohydrates and components of carbohydrate foods like fiber, antioxidants, and polyphenols. And dietary fiber on food labels and guidelines for specific fibers needs to be perhaps a bit revisited. The effects of fiber beyond diabetes and cardiovascular disease, like on the micro effects on the microbiome and cancer, 
promote also low glycemic index uh, foods in Asia and Europe and introduce a low GI symbol uh, in uh, the European Union on uh, healthy food products. So we are going to organize a meeting next, uh, hopefully next summer, um, in uh, Cilento. Pollica Cilento is, um, well, Gabriele knows the, this uh, area very well. <laughs> it's nearby, not far from Naples. Uh, it's, the bir it's, it's the birthplace of the Mediterranean, the Italian Mediterranean diet, and that's where Ansel Keys uh, lived for uh, 20 odd years. He was very smart. He, he went to live in a beautiful place and um, with a good diet at the time. So we're going to talk about um, um, during that meeting, we will try to do two days meeting. One day we will try to focus on dietary fiber and the second day on a glycemic index. And uh, these are a bit more details about what uh, we would like to talk about. So updates on dietary fiber in type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease and cancer uh, in the, on the microbiome. And as I, as I mentioned, 0.5 dietary fiber claims perhaps revisited on beta-glucans. Yesterday, I heard a lot of talks about beta-glucans, very interesting. Um, we understand that there are claims uh, um, that, they can, that people can, or industry can, can put on, on products in North America and Europe too, but um, these claims uh, um, are not well controlled, right? We, we don't know if, peop, if the industry is putting uh, small molecular size beta-glucans. So we saw that that doesn't work very well on glycemia and uh, lowering lipids. And um, I recently tested one of the brands that uh, in Italy says that it contains uh, beta-glucans and it's supposed to lower cholesterol. And uh, thanks to the University of Milan, uh, where they tested it, they tested for glycemic index, was actually we would expect a low glycemic index, but it was actually high on 78 on a glucose scale. So uh, perhaps they bought the, uh, they explained to me that they bought the beta glucans from barley produced for the beer industry. And the beer industry produces barley that has a, a low molecular weight beta glucan because they don't want the viscosity. It does not help with beer making. So, but that's the cheapest one because it's a byproduct of beer making. So maybe we need also to instruct the, well, we need to do a bit more studies, but we need to instruct also the industry perhaps on uh, these aspects. And of course the guidelines may need to include these aspects. Um, yeah, we will also, I hope we can be able to talk also about functional high fiber foods because uh, after all, people uh, want to eat foods that they like. And um, if we don't suggest the foods that, uh, and if we don't help the food industry to produce foods that people like, but that are healthy at the same time, I think uh, we're not gonna go too far with our science. Day two. Okay, so the day two, it will talk about uh, glycemic index, uh, diabetes and prediabetes in Asia, glycemic index testing and legislation in Asia, updates on uh, GI studies, of course, and the GI symbol program in the EU. And this is um, very important, the glycemic index. Uh, also in Asia, they are realizing that it's, uh, they, they, that, um, it's important uh, to target diabetes. Um, the um, health minister of Singapore has declared a war on diabetes, and there are uh, low GI um, laboratories in Singapore, three in Singapore, one in Beijing. So things are, um, are moving uh, towards, hopefully, a, um, an implementation of the low GI um, diet, low GI symbol, perhaps. And this is also in Europe. There is an interest. This is a, I just got this um, email from uh, one of the member of parliament, of the European parliament, and he sa states, I'll just read it, since the beginning of my mandate, I've worked on the issue of diabetes, and I consider the glycemic index an additional tool to prevent this disease. So I'll present a motion to uh, the European parliament. So this is, Therefore, an important topic. And also, we can see that, that there are results. In Australia, the glycemic index uh, has decreased uh, by 5% and glycemic load 12% in the population. And uh, diabetes in Australia has stabilized, possibly also because of these preventive measures. Um, this is data from Alan Barkley, Australia, showing diabetes has stabilized. And therefore, we need also, again, uh, low glycemic index choices. And uh, thanks, Andrew for your uh, slide, I just wanted to point out that, uh, again, he was able to create a, a healthy, a high fiber food, uh, brand, but uh, with a low glycemic index of 47, you see it at the bottom. So we need uh, also to tell industry to, to produce these foods. So I hope to see some of you in Cilento next year, and thank you very much for your attention, and thank you, the ICQC group, for the support. Thank you very much, Lilia.